All right, let's get started. You're born September 22nd, 2001. That makes you a seven life path numerology. Overall, you're meant to be learning and you're meant to be teaching. You're very good at things like the internet, technology. Shocker, right? No, it's not a shocker. Yeah. You do have the ability to talk to the other side. You have a median energy that makes any sense. So the elite are using it. So clearly they believe in doing things in the mathematically most accurate time. So if you want to increase your chance of success, doing th things at a certain time matters. Every day has an energy. So yes, it does apply as far as imprint energy. How does that apply to the average person? You can go with the energy and not again. You don't have to believe in it, it still works. All right, today we're going to be talking about astrology and numerology and how this might be the hidden code that unlocks the matrix. I'm someone that's always been super interested in the occult and the hidden teachings of old. You know, things like the laws of the universe or hidden history. Anything really with an interesting rabbit hole I've probably spent hours on. I'm too curious for my own good sometimes, and maybe you can relate to that. Because I love watching, I love reading, I love creating these little theories about the world. And I guess that's why I infiltrated the cult of Scientology which inevitably led to me getting my channel banned. But we can talk about that at a different time. But anyway, that's why recently my interest with astrology and specifically numerology is at an all-time high. But this didn't come from just anywhere. Over the three or four years I've spent watching person after person, teaching concept after concept, I've seen a lot. I've seen people call these teachings the ultimate cheat code to advancing your life. And I've seen others just call it bullshit. But you'll never really get the full picture from one person. I've been looking at this shit for years. I've been looking at this non-productive conspiracy shit just because I like it. And I've started to piece together the little pieces of the puzzle. And it kind of makes sense. Like, weirdly makes sense. And we're going to go through everything. What it means, how it works from kind of like an objective standpoint as I'm learning these things with you guys. So what we're trying to attempt to understand is what is numerology? What actually is astrology? What do they mean? How do they work? But more importantly, how can you use them to benefit your life? This is my journey into the spiritual sciences and how it led me to hiring a professional numerologist and astrologer to help me exploit the video game that we call life. Developing right now a search for a killer in South Florida after an up and coming rapper is shot dead. 20 year old XXX Temptation killed in the apparent robbery. Police say the artist, whose real name is Jose Onfroy, was leaving a Broward County motorcycle shop yesterday when he was shot by two men who ran up to his car. He was rushed to a hospital but did not make it. Onfroy's death comes just weeks after he earned his first number one album, which debuted March 31st. 1245. Restate my assumptions. So, what do you mean? And he just looked me dead in the eye and he was like, I'm not gonna make it past 21. And then just went right back to fucking with the chopsticks. He would not sleep at night. And he would tell me he hears voices. Literally, you'd be like, oh, I took LSD and I talked to a spirit that's a demon and told me information about myself, about how long I'm gonna live, that they're gonna come get him at some point. I really didn't like that shit at that point. The subject is gematria. That's the proper way to say the word. People who follow me hear me say it. That's what I said. Gematria all the time, because that's the way I learned it before I was corrected. Of course, it's a word that almost nobody's ever heard of, so it's easy to mispronounce it. What the subject's about is the ancient practice of coding numbers into words. The ancient Jews used Hebrews in their numerical system. Eh? Each letter's a number. Like the Hebrew A, Aleph, it's one. B, Bet, it's two. You understand? But look at this. The numbers are interrelated. Like, take the Hebrew word for father. Av, Aleph, Bet. One, two, equals three. All right? Hebrew word for mother, Aim, Aleph, Mem. One, 40, equals 41. Sum of three and 41, 44. All right? Now, Hebrew word for child. All right? Mother, father, child. Yelad. That's 10, 30, and 4. 44. 
Tor is just a long string of numbers. Some say that it's a code sent to us from God. And it comes from Kabbalah, which is mysticism that dates back to Babylon. There's a text out there, a, a Kabbalistic text called the Book of Formations. The book if you of... open up that book, you only have to read the first paragraph. It begins, the Book of Formation. Book God of Formation. created the world by merging the letter with the number with the word. The way I got into this research was looking into September 11th. How, how did you find out about numerology at first? Okay. Like. So I want to hear your origin story, bro. Okay, no, no problem, no problem. Um, it was basically 9/11, man. I noticed that Flight 77, which reportedly hit the Pentagon, I noticed that it took off at 8:20 and it crashed at 9:37. So I was like, hmm, Flight 77 hit the Pentagon 77 minutes after taking off. Whoa! And then I did some more research and I noticed Washington D.C. was on the 77th meridian. And then I noticed the Pentagon, which construction began on September 11th, 1941, Whoa. the day they broke ground. I noticed the Pentagon's exactly 77 feet tall. People can say whatever they want, but at the end of the day, if you can see this stuff actually working with your own eyes. So I was like, I was like, how weird is this? I was like, is there something to numbers that I don't understand? Wait a second. First plane that hit was Flight 11. And then it happens on the 11th, which is 9-11. Yeah. And then the Twin Towers look like an 11 side by side. They both have 110 stories. New York City, 11 letters. New York's the 11th state in the union. Wait a second. And then I'm like, the Pentagon, 11 letters. Shanksville, where that other plane crashed, 11 letters. At this point, I'm like, wait a second. This can't be a coincidence. And then I remembered something. I remember in World War One, they ended the Great War on 11-11 at exactly 11 o'clock. So they were still firing bullets at each other at 10.55. Yeah. It didn't stop till it was 11. And at that point, I knew people were doing stuff with numerology and astrology. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know what. All right, let's just take a breath for a second. Who, who are these people? And at this point, I'm still kind of a skeptic. So before you get mad at me, I'm just showing you information. If you don't resonate with it, if you don't think it's legit, if it sounds too weird, just click off. It's just gonna save you the headache. Now's your chance to leave right before I explain the juicy shit. So anyway, these two are, in my eyes, responsible for popularizing numerology. First, you've got Zachary Hubbard, who focuses on gematria, or gematria, which you just learned is uh, the ancient practice of coding letters into numbers. And Gary Grinberg, who focuses on numerology and a small amount of astrology, which we'll get into. Now, between the two of these people, one of which I found on YouTube, the other on Twitter, Zach's YouTube has been deleted 24 times. And I think Gary's Twitter account, Gary, <laughs> it's a stupid, nah, that's, <laughs> it's not a dumb name, it just isn't. Um, his Twitter account's been deleted 15 times, I think. But at this point, I still don't understand like the entire significance of like the full picture, basically. So I decided to look a bit deeper, and this was when, around the time, I was like, shit, this might actually be legit, man. This is, uh, wow. Top G's a fraud. Damn. Okay. Andrew Tate is a tiger. So for sure, so, he knows then. He knows he can take advantage no, of his tiger no, year. No, well, dude, he only did it this year because he's a tiger year. Some of my former students work for him. Again, I, I have 1,300 students. He poached a couple of my guys. So right now, he's begging Jake Paul for a fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He wants... You guys saw that, right? I saw that. Yeah, right? yeah. Do not fight this son of a bitch this year. Mm -hmm. Because if you fight a tiger in a tiger year, the edge goes with him. Oh, but if you shit. But if you wait till 2023, you won't hear anything about this clown next year. But mm -hmm. this year, he's in his own energy, so he's blowing up. Controversial influencer Andrew Tate and his brother Tristan are arrested in Romania as part of a human trafficking probe. News broke late Thursday evening by... Anyway, so let's answer the question of what we're actually dealing with. We can almost view both of these combined practices together as ways to interpret meaning from numbers. And we can both observe the random synchronicities of, you know, when there's like the same number in everywhere in a certain event. I think that's more of what Zach does. That's Gematria. Or we can purposefully code our realities so that we are always in tune numerologically blah, 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 um, in ways that are beneficial for us. All right. So that's I think that's where Gary comes in a bit a bit more. So basically everything in life as we know it can be understood with numbers. 
And these practices are pretty much the way we can assign numerological data or like meaning from numbers from things that aren't necessarily numerical, like words or events. So I guess, remember when your teacher said, ah, oh, you really can't do anything with maths and you thought this, this, they're talking shit. Maybe they weren't. All right, so this leads me to the big question. How can I use this information to actually hack the matrix? That's why I signed up to begin with. I wanted to know how this knowledge can actually help me. And that's why I booked a meeting with Gary's right hand man, who goes by the name of Wisecat. And in addition to asking him how I can glitch the matrix by using its cheat codes, we're going to go through together and see how many things a complete stranger can tell about me from just from numerology, I guess. Yeah. And I'm going to be harsh on him. I'm not going to let these general things slide. All right, let's get started. You're born September 22nd, 2001. That makes you a seven life path in numerology. You are a seven life path born year of the snake. People with your birthday overall, one of the main things you need to be doing in this life, you need to be learning. Be learning, and you're meant to be teaching. That's the main thing. Uh, when it comes to people with the seven energy overall, you're definitely smarter than the average person. All right, so he's pretty on point so far. I am a genius. That is my number. Um, so number seven. And I'm pretty sure he goes on to say that I need to be teaching and learning or whatever. He didn't, he like, we're strangers, bro. He doesn't know my job is a literal te- my, The way that I make money is I'm an English tutor. I'm a teacher. So that's the first thing he's pretty spot on with. And before you go tell me, oh, everyone's going to say that they're smart, all right? When I actually went to the Scientology cult, wherever, the, like, the lodge, they literally IQ tested me. And you can check what IQ I got in that video. All right, all the naysay. I know there's going to be people. Believe it or not. All right, you're definitely wiser beyond your years and smarter than the average person. You're definitely somebody who's a high IQ, deep thinker. You're definitely somebody who values his me time, his alone time. Overall, introspection, being by yourself. The average person, if I put them in the wilderness for six months, they'd probably go crazy. But not you. All right, um, all good so far, but I definitely would go crazy if i was in the world like bro come on because you're very smart the matrix made your body weaker okay a little bit weaker so you're injury and disease prone you're the most likely person to get injured playing sports uh stub your toe in the house cut yourself in the kitchen all right i've been nitpicking up until now but this is where he kind of fucks up for the first time i've never really had a major injury i do get like little nicks because i'm just a klutz but i've never broken a bone and it's not for lack of trying i've been skating fighting for a minute now first fuck up i would say I would not recommend a career as an athlete or a strong man um, because because you're the most injury disease prone person because you have that seven. Uh, you look at a majority of these athletes that have seven energy, they're the most injury disease prone. You look at athletes that have seven energy on their jerseys, whether it's jersey number seven, 16, 25, 34, 43, so on and so forth. Those are all seven energies. Those players are still injured even if they have no seven in their birthday. 22 is also the number of the cult following. Um, I'll use myself as an example. You can relate to this. Maybe you can't. Maybe you can't. I started a YouTube channel years ago, right? And I wasn't even really trying, and I had 5,000 subscribers. That's how 22s are. 22 is the number of the cult following. You notice that a majority of movies that are released on the 22nd or total 22 days, they have cult followers. Even if they originally did bad in the movie theaters, people still follow them years later. Snake is the wisest sign. And the snake is the best when it comes to this type of stuff. Uh, numerology, astrology, magic, esoterics. Snake is the best by far. Okay, so you are on the right path. This is stuff you're meant to be doing. When it comes to the snake, snake overall is the most jealous sign and most vengeful sign in all of astrology. Okay, let me repeat that. It is the most jealous sign and most vengeful sign. All right, kind of true, but still very general information. Uh, when it comes to the snake overall, it is the most unluckiest sign overall. So what I mean by that is, I talk about like games of chance, like gambling, oh, yeah. uh, lotteries, stuff like that. It's the most unluckiest sign. But a lot of your snake peers are more socialistic. They want things for free. They're lazy. They want the government to get them hands out. Socialism begins with S. Snake begins with S. All right, I'm pretty open to this whole thing, but this sounds very reachy. Um, I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying it sounds like a reach. Uh, when it comes to your particular energy, you're born near of the snake. You have two friend signs. You have the ox. You have the rooster. So it goes every four year increments are your power years. Okay. So you're born in 2001. Your last power year was actually 2021. When you're coming out of that worldwide pandemic, that was the year of the ox. 80 to 90% of snakes had a very good ox year. Can't really disagree with that. I uh, met my girlfriend in 2021, started this YouTube channel, moved out of my house. A lot of positives out of that. Whether it's finances, whether it's health, whether it's um, relationships with the opposite sex, that's usually how it goes. 2021 was your last power year. Your next power year is going to be 2025. All right, so I assume a power year means just 
just a year where things go your way. So this is the first thing you can take away from it is find out what Chinese zodiac sign or whatever you are and then figure out which years are your power years and then do things that are risky in those years. Start your businesses or whatever. That's the, the first kind of cheat code. That's when you want to do it because that's when the energy favors you. That's how it works. Every sign has a sign it goes best with. Okay. Now the sign that goes best with the snake is the rooster. Okay, so if I was making a soulmate list for you, I would pick a bunch of women born in 2005. Yeah, so basically Old Mate just wants me to date chicks born in 2005, so I guess uh, we're going for the minors. <laughs> That's who you go best with. So women born in 2005 is who you go best with. Never buy a car that was manufactured in the pig year. So every 12 years, counting from the pig year, you'll know what a pig year is, so... Yeah, so basically a lot of this is just like avoiding your enemy years, whether that's where you're buying your house, in what place, like the country, what year the country was founded, what year is that, what year was the company that manufactured your car, even to the point where it's like when you go to the grocery store, the companies that are manufacturing food in your pig year are not good for you. So like... Ah, uh, yeah, I don't know. Same thing happened to me. I'm born in the year of the cat. My enemy is the rooster. I used to always get sick when I used to eat at places that were founded in the year of the rooster. 80% of the time when I was eating there a lot. Same thing applies to you. It means overall the energy doesn't favor you. Whether it's bad luck with the ladies, whether it's health issues, whether you're getting jumped or robbed a lot. It's always going to be, if you start the business there, your real estate won't do too good. You have a bunch of nightmare tenants. It won't go good there. It's like having home court advantage when you're playing sports. When it comes to, um, you know, these energies, Anything that's not a friend or enemy energy, any in-between sign would just be neutral. Your power month is May. Every day for the rest of your life, your power time is 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Yeah, it's uh, 12.49 right now, my friend. So we're in the... Yeah, so, yep, yep. That's per perfect, right? You're right on the dot right there. You're doing this call. It's funny. <laughs> enemy month. I'm sorry, enemy Sorry, enemy time. It's 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. So you're probably thinking, what the hell do I do with this information? Yep. Do not, I would not go skydive in March. <laughs> I would not launch... I would not... Launch a new YouTube channel in March. Yeah. I, if you do MMA and fighting, if you have a tournament schedule, I would try not to do it in March. Try to push it back. Yeah. Um, if you do not get married in March, uh, don't take any. If you trade stocks, do not trade heavy in March. If you okay. like to gamble, do not go to the casino in March. That's when you're at your weakest. That's when your luck is at its worst. Opposite is true of May. You want to take more action in May. Yeah. So new house, new car, new friendship, marriage. All right. So there you have like the general information. Obviously, this is specific to me, but you can figure it out for yourself in terms of what your power times are or you can get a reading but then we moved on from less general information and i got to ask questions and i basically was like how do is this legit like how do we know this is tr correct look at facts upon facts like people born in the yep. 28 what are the chances of all these people born in 28 being rich bill gates steve jobs ron james birthday as a 28 tiger woods worldwide golf birthday as a 28 <laughs> And, and apply it to them personally too and keep going down look at celebrity people care about celebrities right you can go to every category celebrities sports um kim kardashian kanye west you you can go you can do as many different ways because you're in video graphics look at so you're in youtube world right i'm in youtube too look at the youtubers mr beast mm. i can explain logan paul you can explain why each of these people have why they were chosen or why they're, they're ha they have charisma got you you know say you know this so 11 light pass, people born in the 11, Joe Rogan has 11, they, they're naturally charismatic. Yep. You're 22, it's easy for you to gain a cult following, especially if you put a little more effort in, it'll nice. be easy for you to get fans, get people to follow you easily, because you know, this is how it works. So with the like, say let's, I'm, I'm pretty versed on the 9-11 thing, I've heard it like a million times. So it's like, flight 11 hits a building that looks like 11, 110 yep, stories yep, yep. on the 11th parallel, New York City, uh, 11 letters in Gamatria it equals 111, all these 11s, right? Um, yeah. How do you translate that into, like, what significance does that have to someone who doesn't understand it? And the second question is, are these phenomena that occur as a result of, like, a simulation or a matrix type thing, or is it uh, orchestrated that way, or is it a bit of both? Well, it's it's a bit of both, because these are the cheat codes of the game, so I'll answer the second question first. Okay. This is a cheat code, this is a simulation, this is a virtual reality. And now you, people ask, like, how can you prove that? Well, I'm sure you've been down the rabbit hole of knowing what Mandela effects are. Yeah. If you can remember certain events and then I'll change, clearly you're in a game. How could something that was physical change? How can a logo change? If you're not within a game, how can that change completely? Mm. How can a line from a movie be different? Even when there's VHS tapes and old DVDs, how did those change? Even the ones that you have in your house change. Even when you look at Star Wars, Luke, I am your father. Now in this timeline, it's no, no I am your father. So the fact that there's timeline changes and Mandela effects proves the simulation. 
Um, the fact that somebody with the same birthday as you, I can read them like a book, just like I read you, and I can see the exact same things, and it'll be spot on 99%. It's like you're a sim in the game. Yeah. Um, when it comes, so so it's, it go hand in hand. It's the cheat code to this matrix. Now, numerology and astrology doesn't apply to the dream world. When you go to sleep, there's no numerology there. Mm. But when you, in this world, the simulation, when you're inside your body, it applies here. Okay. So um, these people aren't really orchestrated events. They're just going with the energy. Because remember, the, the elite, they're trapped in the matrix just like us. Yeah. That's, the wrong, that's what Tate got wrong. That's what Tay got wrong. He thinks the government is the matrix or your boss at your job is the matrix. No, they're trapped in the matrix just like us. The difference is um, the elite are using it. So clearly they believe in doing things in the mathematically most accurate time. So if you want to increase your chance of success, doing th things at a certain time matters. You want that promotion at your job? Uh, do it going on a three day matters. Because three is communication. You want to be better at your communication? Do it on a three day. You probably don't want to do it on an 11 day. You'll probably be more emotional. You'll probably be more triggered. You'll probably mess up the interview. Every day has energy. So yes, it does apply as far as imprint energy. How does that apply to the average person? You can go with the energy and out again. You don't have to believe in it, it still works. If you're putting out something for kids, do it on a three day, child begins to see the third letter. If you're putting something out that's a little more sexual, put it on a five day. If you're doing something for family, do it on a six day. If you're having a sale, do it on the eight day, because eight is money. Yeah. There's, there's so many different ways you can go with this, but hopefully that answers your question. So there you have it. Whether you choose to invest in this theory or not is completely up to you. But I'd say that the more you start observing these little things, the more they start becoming true. And whether that's a phenomena in and of itself is up for debate. But I do think there is something to numerology. There's definitely some weird kind of fringe theories surrounding it and the logic isn't completely 100% true right now. But that doesn't mean it has no value. In fact, I think it does have value. Even if it's just us putting value on it, that's just as valid. Um, but I do think it goes a bit deeper than that. So let's use this video as a test. The guy that was just giving that reading, Wise Cat, he told me to upload this video on the 3rd of July, 2023. So that's what I'm going to do. And we're going to see the results based on that if this video does well or poorly or whatever. Subscribe, like, all the YouTube shit and like.